I am Rabbi Gary Fink, and with the support of the Jewish residents of Leisure World, the staff of Montgomery Hospice, and Cantor Wendy Gonzalez, we are able to provide this Rosh Hashanah service during these days of social distancing due to the COVID-19 pandemic. We hope that this service will help you feel connected to so many others who are celebrating the Jewish New Year through a video screen. I will be announcing page numbers for those who have the Reform Movement's Mishkan HaNefesh High Holiday Prayer Book. Many communities do not sound the shofar when Rosh Hashanah falls on the Sabbath, as it does this year. Other communities have reinstituted the tradition of the ancient Jerusalem temple sounding the shofar on Rosh Hashanah no matter when it occurred. In this service, you will hear the sound of the shofar. The Torah portion that is read on Rosh Hashanah also varies among communities. We will be reading about the binding of Isaac from Genesis chapter 22. Let's begin our service. We begin our New Year service with an attitude of gratitude for waking up in the morning. Page 108 in the Machsor. <laughs> On page 120, we find an affirmation of the importance of our physical health. Blessed are you, Holy One, who has formed the human body with wisdom, an intricate network of channels, vessels, and openings. This wondrous structure and the flow of life within us allows us to serve you and give thanks. Let us cherish this gift of flesh and blood, honor it as God's creation. Hello, hi, hello, hi. 
Shacharit service begins now, the formal morning service, on page 142 in the Machzor, page 142, it is a, a call to worship, followed by a recognition of the theme of light, the light of day, the light of the spirit, the light of knowledge, enlightenment. <laughs> Baruch Adonai, Amen Vorach, Leolam, Ba'el. Baruch Adonai, Amen Vorach, Leolam, Ba'el. And in the middle of that page, in English, we read, Source of Blessing, our eternal God, your power fills the cosmos, shaping light, creating darkness, making peace and, and fashioning all things. Infinite light is preserved in life's treasure house. Lights from the darkness, said God, it was so. Page 144. <laughs> Baruch Ata Adonai Yotzer Hamaorot. Our praise to you, Adonai, creator of the cosmic lights. And on page 146, as our morning prayers continue in the English, we read on page 146 Love abundant, love unstinting. Our God, you have enfolded us in love, tender compassion beyond all bounds, your precious gift. Our fathers and mothers gave you their trust, and you gave them Torah, laws by which to live. For their sake, teach us as well. Grace us with your guidance. Loving Father, merciful Mother of all of us, Grant us clear understanding that we may listen, learn, and, and teach, preserve, practice, and fulfill with love every lesson of your Torah. May learning your Torah light up our eyes. May our hearts embrace your mitzvot. 
unite us in love and reverence for you, that we may never feel ashamed of your deeds. Page 146. Page one hundred fifty. On page 158, we read, Adonai said to Moses, Speak to the people of Israel and tell them to make for themselves tzitzit, fringes, on the corner of their clothing throughout their generations and let them place upon the corner fringe a thread of violet blue. The fringes will be yours to see and remember all the mitzvot, the sacred obligations of Adonai, do them and do not be misled by lustful urges of your heart and your eye. Be mindful of all my mitzvot and do them. Thus you will become holy to your God. I, Adonai, am your God, who brought you out of Egypt to be your God. I, Adonai, your God. Adonai Eloheichem emet. Adonai, your God, is true. We now move to page 160, and we read toward the bottom of the page. True and steadfast is this teaching, beloved and treasured, a source of wonder, a fount of goodness, a thing of beauty, and ours for all time. And true it is, the eternal God is our sovereign, the rock of Jacob, our protecting shield. Throughout all generations, God's name lives on. God's throne stands firm. 
God's dominion prevails. God's grandeur and faithfulness endure through eternity. God's words are precious. They will live forever. Page 164. Ni kamo khabaili Adonai Ni kamo khab le dar ba kodesh no rati hilot o se fele no rati hilot o se fele shira kharisha Amida prayers begin on page 166. Adonai, open my lips that my mouth may declare your praise. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu v'elohe avoteinu v'imoteinu, Elohe Abraham, Elohe Yitzchak, Elohe Yaakov, Elohe Sarah, Elohe Rivcha, Elohe Rachel, Elohe Leah. Ha'el ha'gadol ha'gibor v'hanora el el yon gomel chasadim tovim v'kone ha'kol v'zocher chasei avot v'imahot u'mevi gula livnei v'neihem l'ma'an shemo v'ahava. Zohreinu l'chaim Melech ha'fet ha'chaim V'chot v'einu v'sefer ha'chaim L'man ha'elohim chaim Melech ha'zer Moshia umagain, Baruch atah Adonai. Magain Avraham, Bezrat Sarah. Let's continue our Amida with reading in English on page 170. Your life-giving power is forever, Adonai, with us in life and in death. You liberate and save, cause dew to descend, and with mercy abundant, lovingly nurture all life. From life to death, you are the force that flows without end. You support the falling, heal the sick, free the imprisoned and confined. You are faithful even to those who rest in the dust. Power beyond power, from whom salvation springs, sovereign over life and death, who is like you, merciful God, who compares with you. With tender compassion, you remember all creatures for life, faithful and true, Worthy of our trust, you sustain our immortal yearnings. In you, 
we place our undying hopes. Baruch Ata Adonai Mechaye HaKol, wellspring of blessing, power eternal, you are the one who gives life and renews all life. On page 174, we begin the Unatana Tokef prayer, the prayer that reminds us just how fragile and uncertain life is. On Rosh Hashanah, this is written, and on the fast of Yom Kippur, this is sealed. How many will pass away from this world? How many will be born into it? Who will live and who will die? Who will reach the ripeness of age? And who will be taken before their time? Who by fire and who by water, who by war and who by beast, who by famine and who by drought? Who by earthquake and who by plague, who by strangling and who by stoning, who will rest and who will wander, who will be tranquil, who will be troubled, who will be calm and who tormented, who will live in poverty and who in prosperity, who will be humbled and who exalted. Me <laughs> 
But through return to the right path, through prayer and righteous giving, we can transcend the harshness of the decree. On page 184, we continue reading in the middle of the page in the English. We sanctify your name in the world as celestial song sanctifies you in realms beyond our world in the words of your prophet, holy, holy, holy is the God of heaven's hosts. The fullness of the whole earth is God's glory. God of strength who gives us strength, God of might who gives us might. How magnificent the signs of your being throughout the earth. Blessed is the splendor that shines forth from the eternal. Our God is one, Avinu and Malkenu, sovereign source of life and liberation, revealing with mercy to all who live, I am Adonai, your God. Toward the bottom of the page, we continue with our blessing and our, our hope. Eternal our God, remember us, be mindful of us, and redeem us for a life of goodness and blessing and all of our loved ones. Amen. So Renu Adonai Eloheinu Boletoba Amen Ufokteinu Bolivracha Amen Vahushienu Volechaim Amen On page 206 we find blessings preceding the sounding of the shofar. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kidshanu B'mitzvotav V'tzivanu Lishma Ako Shofar Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam, shehachianu, v'kiyamanu, v'gianu, lazman hazeh. Source of blessing, eternal our God, you fill the universe with majestic might, summoning us to hear the sound of the shofar. Source of blessing, eternal our God, 
You fill the universe with majestic might, giving us life, upholding the life within us, and bringing us to this time. Takiya, Shevarim Teruwa. Takiya, Takiya. Shevari Takiya Takiya Turuwa Takiya Page 207 Let the wishes of our lips, our heart's desire, be pleasing before you, God Most High. Our Torah service begins now. We introduce the Torah service on page 227 and 228. Adonai, Due to the limitations around creating this service, we'll have only one aliyah, one aliyah, that is, one blessing before and after the reading of the Torah. Please do join with me in chanting the Torah blessing so we can have a shared communal aliyah. On the right side of the screen, as the Torah is read, you'll see the Hebrew text as it appears in the Torah, and the Hebrew text with vowels and punctuation below. You'll hear the Hebrew chanting of the portion in a soft undertone, and the English translation as a voiceover. As I mentioned in the introduction to the service, we will read about the binding of Isaac. It is a dramatic story, curious, horrifying, evocative. Abraham hears God's voice telling him to offer his beloved son Isaac as a sacrifice on Mount Moriah. At the very last minute, an angel stops Abraham as he is about to slay his son. Was this a test of faith, of commitment? Was it a test of God? How old was Isaac when this occurred? Some say he was a very young boy, unable to comprehend what was to come. Others say he was a youth or a young man who was willing to give up his life for his people and his God. On the left side of the screen, you will see a work of art or artistry which depicts the binding of Isaac. As you view these pictures, it may be interesting to note the different ways that the artists portray Isaac. What does he look like? What is he feeling? How old is he? 
Please also note how the angel of God is portrayed by these various artists. And now, our Aliyah. Baruchu et Adonai Hamvorach, Baruch Adonai Hamvorach Leolam Vaed, Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam, Asher Bachar Banu Mikol Haamim, Vinatan Lanu et Torato, Baruch Ata Adonai Notein Ha Torah. And so it was that after these events, God put Abraham to a test. And God said to him, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. And God said, Come, take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go forth to the land of Moriah to offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I will show you. And Abraham arose early in the morning and harnessed his donkey and took with him his two young servants and his son Isaac. And he split the burnt offering wood and rose and departed for the place that God had said to him. On the third day, Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place in the distance. And Abraham said to his young servants, You stay here with the donkey, while the boy and I go further on. We will worship and return to you. And Abraham took the burnt offering wood and placed it on his son Isaac and took in his own hand the firestone and the knife. And the two of them walked on together. Isaac said to his father, Abraham, he said, My father, and he said, Here I am, my son, and he said, Here is the firestone, and here is the wood, but where is the sheep for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, God will see to the sheep for a burnt offering, my son. And the two of them walked on together. And they came to the place that God had said to him. And there... Abraham built the altar and arranged the wood and bound his son Isaac and placed him on the altar over the wood. And Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And a messenger of Adonai called to him from heaven, saying, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. The messenger said, Do not lay your hand on the boy. Do nothing to him. For now I know you are in awe of God, since you would not deny me your son your only one. 
And Abraham lifted his eyes, and suddenly he saw in the thicket a ram caught by its horns. And Abraham took the ram and offered it as a burnt offering in place of his son. Abraham called that place by the name Adonai Yir'eh, Adonai will see, as it is said to this day, on the mountain of Adonai there is seeing. And a messenger of Adonai called to Abraham from heaven a second time, and said, By myself I swear, declares Adonai, that because you have acted thus, and would not deny me your son, your only one, I will bless you greatly, and I will multiply your seed like the stars in the sky, and like sand by the sea. Your seed shall possess the gate of its foes, and all the earth's nations shall be blessed through your seed, because you hearkened to my voice. And Abraham returned to his young servants, and they rose, and together they walked to Be'er Sheva. And Abraham dwelt in Be'er Sheva. Please join with me as we chant the blessing for the conclusion of the recitation of the Torah portion. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Natan Lanu Torat Emet Vichaye Olam Nata Betochenu Baruch Ata Adonai Noten HaTorah Shana Tova. One of the most surprising and heart-rendering testimonies broadcast during the Democratic National Convention was a video of 13-year-old Braden Harrington stammering and stuttering his way through his story of meeting Joe Biden, who himself overcame a stutter from his youth to become the vice president. I can relate because I, too, have had to manage a stutter from at least as far back as second grade. My own speech disability, my own stutter, has been a constant companion almost every minute of every day for almost as long as I can remember. It has influenced every relationship, each of my careers and work life, how I look at the world, and the person that I have become. The fact that the Torah describes Moses as a stutterer was never much comfort for me growing up. It didn't diminish the sense of failure or being broken, the embarrassment, shame, or the stigma that I constantly felt. In retrospect, I realized that there was nothing to be ashamed of or embarrassed about, but that's not what it felt like at the time. As I look back at my own life and struggles, it's easy to see how my stutter impacted and influenced every aspect of my existence. Now, when I think about this struggle that felt so traumatic to me, 
I recognize that it doesn't compare with those who at a young age have experienced abuse, violence, or loss of loved ones. I've been blessed with loving and supportive parents and family, and except for my speech problem, I had a fine childhood. I certainly understand that in the scheme of things, there are many others who are not as fortunate as I have been. We don't need to go far to find a glaring example. In today's Torah portion, the story of the Akedah, the binding or sacrifice of Isaac, is a story whose drama revolves around the near killing of Isaac for a religious offering at the hand of his father. Although the point of the story may be that the Jewish God does not require the ritual sacrifice of children, think about how the experience might have looked through Isaac's eyes. If he were a child at the time, imagine what terror he felt at the ultimate betrayal. A parent whose function is to protect a child appears to become the abuser the killer. If he were a young adult who went willingly, imagine Isaac's terror of being chosen by God to be killed. What was the impact on Isaac's life and psyche when Abraham brought him to Mount Moriah to be sacrificed? Was it a childhood trauma? I would think so what psychologists now call adverse childhood experiences. Imagine the relationship issues, the trust issues that emerge from such a harrowing experience. Many commentators agree that Isaac's subsequent unremarkable life may have had its origins in his misfortune of being placed on that altar even though he was fortunately replaced as an offering by the ram, which appeared to take his place. As the Torah narrative continues, the life of Isaac is punctuated by two themes, emulating his father Abraham and digging wells. Like his father Abraham, it was difficult for Isaac to have children. When he did, His children could not peacefully live together, and he presided over a broken family. Like his father, a famine almost drives him to Egypt, and like Abraham, Isaac pretends that his wife is his sister to avoid the wrath of a powerful ruler. Judaic scholar Ellen Dannon points out that The most thankless of all the ways Isaac repeats his father's life seems to be having to re-dig the wells that Abraham had dug, but others had filled up. She writes, Isaac's name may mean he will laugh, but there seems to be so little joy in his life. At best, Isaac's life was unremarkable and his story is a mere shadow of the accomplishments of his father Abraham and of his son Jacob. We can wonder, if Isaac as an adult were to seriously reflect or had gotten into therapy with a good counselor, would he have been able to unravel his tangled emotions around the memory of coming within an inch of his life at the hand of his father? Would he have been able to work through the burdens of his past, to transcend them, to learn from them, in order to find a more satisfying future? On the other hand, Isaac's life appears unremarkable, but God appears to Isaac and blesses him in the name of his father Abraham and promises that Isaac will have many offspring 
and will become a link in the chain of tradition that has spanned more than 3,000 years. Perhaps living an unremarkable life, finding a wife, raising children, despite obstacles and setbacks along the way, was itself a great triumph for someone like Isaac, who had been so traumatized in his youth. Sometimes living an ordinary life, despite emotional wounds and bruises, shows remarkable resilience. Rosh Hashanah is a time of reflection, a time to look at ourselves as we are now, looking back at where we've come from or what we have gone through, and looking ahead at the days to come. It is an opportunity to learn lessons from our lives and to inform and strengthen our steps ahead. If you could name a challenge or struggle that you experienced in your youth, what might it be? Would it be something from your childhood, adolescence, or perhaps from your young adulthood? So here are three questions to consider as a Rosh Hashanah reflection. One, was there some great challenge or struggle that you experienced in your youth that you don't mind thinking about? Two, how did it impact your life? How did it influence the person you have become? And lastly, three, what life lessons have you learned from that struggle? If you're comfortable talking about it, and only if you are comfortable, you may want to write about or talk about your reflections with someone you're close to, a family member or a friend. It's important to be compassionate and gentle with ourselves and to learn from each other if we can, as we reminisce, reflect, and, God willing, gain in understanding and wisdom. May the new year bring blessing to you and your loved ones, and may the Holy One, the source of blessing in the universe, bring us resilience to be able to grow from strength to strength. Amen. Page 245 our blessing for health and wholeness. Mishabera Chavotenu Abraham Yitzhak Yaakov, who Yivarech Vichazek et Kol HaCholim, Kol Cholei Yisrael Vekol Cholei Yushvei Teve El Hasha Vagala Uvizman Kari Vunomar Amen. We ask blessing and health and strength for all who find themselves ill. May the hands of those who care for them be guided with wisdom and with compassion. May all feel the love and caring of those surrounding them, of those who are thinking of them. And may all of us unite in wishes and hopes for full strength and blessing for all of those who are in need. Baruch atah Adonai Rofe Cholim. Blessed is the source of strength. Mi shapira havutinu Avraham Yitzhak May the one who blessed our mothers, may the one who blessed our fathers, Hear our prayer, hear our prayer, hear our prayer, hear our prayer, and bless us as well. Bless us with the power of your healing. Bless us with the power of your hope. May our hearts be filled with understanding and strengthened by the power of your love. Bless us with the vision for tomorrow. Help us to reach out to those in pain. 
May the warmth of friendship ease our sorrow. Give us courage, give us faith, show us the way. Hear our prayer, hear our prayer, hear our prayer, hear our prayer, and bless us as well. On page 284, our bracha is found. Baruch Ata Adonai, Shomea Kol Trua Amo Yisrael Berachamin. Blessed are you in our lives, Adonai. You hear with love the shofar, true voice of your people, Israel. Tekiya. Shevarim Trua. On page 286, we move to the concluding portion of the service, Alenu, on page 286. Alenu l'shabeach l'adon ha'kol, l'atet g'dula l'etzer b'reshit, sh'lo asanu k'goye ha'aratzot, v'lo samanu k'mishpachot ha'adama, Shelo sam kelkenu kahem, Vigo ralenu, Echo hamonam, Vanak nu korim, Umishtakadim umodim, Lifne melech, Mache hamachim, Akadosh baruchu. Venemar, the Hayadonai, the Melech of Koha Aretz, Bayom Hahu, Bayom Hahu, Ye Adonai Echad, Ushimbahu, Ushimbahu, Ushimbahu Echad. The Mourner's Kaddish is found on page 292. On page 292, as we remember all those who have been a part of our lives and pray that their life and legacy will always be with us and that their lives will always be a blessing. Can you hear Page 200. 92. Yit gadal va yit kadash shemei raba, vi alma di varach irute vi amlich malchute, vachaye hon of yome hon of chaye de hol bait Israel, bagala uvisman kariv vi imru amen. Yehe shemei raba me varach le alam ulalme almaya. Yit barach vayish tabach, vayit paar vayit romam, vayit nase vayit adar, vayit ale vayit halal, shme de kudsha brihu. Le ela ul ela mi kol birhata vashirata, tush behata venechemata, da amiran be alma vi imru amen. 
יהי שלמה רבה מן שמיא, וחיים עלינו ועל כל ישראל, ואמרו אמן. עושה שלום במרומיו, הוא יעשה שלום עלינו ועל כל ישראל, ועל כל יושבי תבל, ואמרו אמן. May the source of peace send peace to all the world and comfort all who are bereaved. Amen. Our concluding song, page 294, Hayom Amsenu, which will be followed by our Lishana Tova blessing on page 301. Page 294, followed by 301. We pause to hear one final Tikiya Gidola. And Lishana Tova Tikatevu Vetechatemu. May you be inscribed and sealed in the book of life and health for a good year. Lishana tova tikateu, Lishana tova tikateu, tikateu, vetechatehimu. Lishana tova tikateu, Lishana tova tikateu, a Shana Tova to all, a good year, a year filled with blessing. Amen. Achat shaati met Adonai Ota avakesh Shivti vevet Adonai O yemei hayai Lachas 
Zot bin Oam, bin Oam Adonai, Ulevaker, the Heichalo. Lacha Zot bin Oam, bin Oam Adonai, Ulevaker,